now we just flip a switch and the light comes on and we have this junk light that's that's doing things to us to our circadian rhythm that's throwing that off and light is also a type of electromagnetic radiation and so you know the idea is you know just to take a step back and say okay the technology can be good but what's it doing to our bodies and how are we changing our environment to where it's different from what our ancestors were exposed to and that's the kind of question that kept keeps ringing in my mind as i'm doing these assessments for people Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We're your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, everybody. I'm Hilda Labrada Gore. And this is episode 158. My guest today is Brian Hoyer. Brian is a nutritional therapy practitioner and a certified geobiologist trained by GeoVital Academy. He is the founder of Shielded Healing, an organization that looks to protective solutions for reducing our EMF exposure. Obviously, Brian is passionate about addressing what's going on in our bodies due to our modern, toxic, and changing environments. He explains how the very technology that makes our lives easier could be detrimental to our health. In this day and time, this is not an easy message to bring, but bring it, Brian does. He explains how cell phones, smart TVs, even baby monitors, and lights in our homes and cities stress out our bodies. Happily, he also offers guidance and practical advice for reducing these stressors and doing our best to mimic our ancestral human habitats for optimal health. Before we get into this fascinating conversation, we want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors who help keep the show on the air. The Wise Traditions Podcast is sponsored in part by Vintage Tradition Tallow Balm, the original whole food of skincare. Check out their new products, including a non toxic paperboard tube for lips and on the go. Get yours now at vintagetradition.com. Ancestral supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. New Zealand sourced liver, organ meats, and bone marrow in convenient gelatin capsules. Order yours today at ancestralsupplements.com. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Brian. Hey, it's good to be here, Hilda. I've heard a lot about your podcast, and I've always heard great things. Yay! I'm glad. I'm glad. And we're really excited to have you on, Brian, because you are a geobiologist. And I don't think we've ever had a geobiologist on the show before. Can you explain to us all what that is exactly? Yeah, well, I'm a geobiologist, and I actually started out as a nutritional therapy practitioner. So I'm very familiar with the whole Weston A. Price Foundation, and we, they do a lot of that training in, with the NTP program. Uh, we talk about Weston Price and read all the different books and recommendations and everything. But so a geobiologist is someone who studies all the different frequencies that are on the earth and it used to be more like the all the frequencies from the earth because those are the only frequencies that we were exposed to but now it's like we have all these different man-made frequencies that we also incorporate into that paradigm as well and so the earth has a magnetic field and there's frequencies that come up from the earth and it's all related to how it's affecting human organisms and really the any any organism that is that is exposed to these types of frequencies. Well, I want to talk to you about how those frequencies are affecting our health, but I'm really surprised to hear you say that the earth might have some frequencies that aren't good for us because I always thought, you know, earthing and grounding. Yeah, it can be, you know, grounding and earthing. I do recommend doing that if the, if you can test the area and it's, it's clean and it's a healthy area from the man-made radiation. But also, yes, there are some natural frequencies that are not healthy. And there's a lot of substances on the earth that are toxic to life. And there are also frequencies that are, that are toxic. And so there, there are a lot of uh, traditions that our ancestors were aware of that we're not so aware of uh, today. And you just look back in the literature and you can see things like the Chinese had feng shui. 
and feng shui was rooted in geopathic stress aversion. They talk about dragon lines and how the earth has these meridians. So if you're over a meridian, that can actually cause there to be too much chi or too much energy in your body, and it can cause a stress to different organs. And one of the things that the naturopathic clinic that I trained with over in Austria, they, they talk about is that cancer needs seven times more energy to proliferate than what the normal energy is like in a more natural area that's free of this, these geopathic stressors. And so, you know, the high energy areas have been shown to be correlated with different types of illnesses. And, you know, there's things like underground water currents, and then there's the earth grid lines from magnetic fields. And the relationship between those fields and the solar radiation causes these grids that, that go on the earth every 12 to 18 feet. And so like even the ancient Greek and Roman cultures, they had traditions uh, of avoiding these things. They used to put their sheep and have them graze on land for a year before building. And if at the end of that year, basically what they would do is they would dissect the entire herd, look at their organs, and if their organs were healthy, then they would go ahead and continue their plans to build on that location. But if they weren't, then they assumed this is not healthy was for a positive human beings thing. either. But are you saying and so the we Earth's magnetic really field not could be a stressor? Put a, a house here or a structure here where people are spending a lot of time. Wow, this is fascinating stuff. But it makes me want to go live in a cave somewhere because, I mean, I can't, I don't think the listener can, we can't really judge how decent our location is in terms of the Earth's magnetic field. But I guess what we can judge is how we're doing in terms of other types of radiation we're exposed to. So can you tell us what exactly we should be looking for? Yeah, so there's all kinds of different man-made radiation that there are meters that you can use. And that's what I do. I travel all over the country and measure the different types of frequencies, the man-made frequencies. I also map out the geopathic stressors in people's homes. But last year, I did over 200 assessments all around the country. And the most common stressors that we find, you know, I tell people that I test for five different things. I test for wireless radiation, and that's any uh, information that's traveling through the air through a wireless network, uh, radio towers, cell phone towers, television towers, all of those frequencies are actually penetrating our home. And then there's the Wi-Fi networks, our cell phones, tablets, baby monitors are a big one, and then all the different smart devices that we have in our homes now. And what are those what are each of those levels of radiation doing to our bodies? So the, the high frequency wireless radiation, which is all, all the things I just mentioned, uh, those have been shown to cause, you know, to be correlated to different types of cancers in some of the biggest studies that have come out recently. The National Toxicology Program had a huge study that came out that showed a correlation. And then there's a study over in Italy by the Ramazzini Institute and they had a massive study that showed the exact same thing with uh, uh, glial cell carcinomas and, and other types of cancers that are correlated with that. But there's a Dr. Martin Paul out in Washington State University. His research shows that these frequencies are actually like the mechanism of them is that they're activating the voltage-gated calcium ion channels in our cells. And what that does is it, it creates an influx of calcium into the cell, and then that process causes an inflammatory process where there's some free radicals that are created called, one of, them, one of the main ones is perioxynitrite. And that basically causes an inflammatory cascade, which is the, uh, a route to a lot of illnesses is when you have the inflammation mm -hmm. and, it, and it basically activates the immune system and causes this whole downward spiral of this inflammation that's that's in the body. Seriously, this is blowing my mind because we are zapping ourselves. And I think there's even a movie out there called Generation Zapped. But we are just bombarding ourselves with these waves that are causing ill health. But we're not really, most of us are not really understanding the link between our environment and our health. We're looking primarily at the food, right? Yeah, a lot of us are looking at food, and rightly so. I mean, we've got things that are doused and sprayed with glyphosate and, you know, these pesticides, and we have this junk food and the genetically modified food that's all out there. There's all of these different stressors 
that are impacting our body and causing it so that our healing, our, our innate healing mechanism that our body has is basically halted. We can't heal anymore. We can't detox anymore. And it's because we've halted the entire process. And one of the things that I, that I talk to my clients about when I'm doing a home assessment is I kind of have them picture a scale. And on one side of the scale, you have all the nourishing things that you do for the body, all the therapies and foods and everything. And then on the other side, you have all the things that are stressing your body. Now, this scale is supposed to be a scale of activating the healing mechanisms in your body. Now, if, you're, if your uh, stressors are outweighing the nourishing support that you're providing, then you're not healing. And if your nourishing support can't ever tip that scale in the right direction because there's too many stressors, you're never going to tip that scale in the direction where your healing is activated. And so in order to uh, heal the body, you have to, yes, eat all the nourishing food, do all of these things correctly, you know, get outside, get sunlight on all these lifestyle things and put things into your body that are healthy for you. But you also have to put your body into a healthy environment and remove all the stressors in order for uh, that scale to be tipped in the right direction. And so a lot of these EMF stressors that we have, like the wireless radiation, that's one thing I test for. There's also electricity in the walls. We have, you know, for the first time in history, all of human history, we have electricity all around us on every wall in the ceiling and sometimes in the floors. And we're just surrounding ourselves with these frequencies and they're you know, you think about the way that electricity impacts the body just by itself, and this is separate from the wireless, is that, you know, when you put electrodes on your muscles and you put voltage through your muscles, what does it do? It contracts your muscles, right? Mm -hmm. And the heart is a muscle, and so we do the same thing. To restart a heart, we're putting voltage through the heart, and the heart is a muscle, so uh, when that voltage goes through, it contracts and it pumps, and then the heart restarts. And so when we're sleeping and we're surrounded by all this electricity, every home I go and test, uh, there's not been one home that does not have very extremely high electric fields on their body when I, when I test it. I test the person in their bed. And so they have like two to 3,000 millivolts going through their body, sometimes higher. I've had as high as 8,000 millivolts going through one person's body. And can they feel that, Brian? I mean, obviously they must have on some level, or they wouldn't have invited you to come and test their home. But can they sense that, do you think? You know, sometimes people can sense it. Uh, the most dramatic experience I had was a woman that I did an assessment for, and I actually put in some solutions for her afterwards. And the very night that she first had a low body voltage, she stopped sweating. She had night sweats for decades, and she just stopped sweating that very night and hasn't like had night sweats since. And so the body has this, uh, you know, we're, it's very sensitive. And if you're being stimulated all night long by this voltage that's contracting your muscles and your cells and causing this inflammatory response on top of that, then you're not really ever getting true rest because on a cellular level, you're constantly contracting when your body is supposed to be resting and rejuvenating and healing while you're sleeping. But instead, people wake up groggy, brain fog, and tired, fatigued, their muscles are sore. And it's just, it's a situation where we can't, we don't necessarily attribute it to anything. People go to their doctors and they explain what they're feeling and they might give them a pill to numb the, the symptoms. But we have to fix this environment if we want to make headway in actually healing the different conditions and symptoms that we're all experiencing. Absolutely. I was just talking with a friend the other day and we were saying, oh my gosh, there are so many mattress companies out there right now. And I think it's because people think the mattress is at fault for their poor sleep. There's so many other factors at play that people have no idea about. Oh yeah. And you know, mattresses are a big part of what I assess at people's homes because a lot of mattresses have metal in them. And so the metal does four things. It acts as an antenna for all the wireless uh, transmissions that are penetrating into the home. It also makes it so the electricity from the walls is actually coming to the body more easily because there's conductive springs and, and metal bed frame and all of those things. And then also like probably 80 to 90% of the mattresses that have springs are actually magnetized. So that means that there's a noxious 
stressful magnetic field on the person's bed that they just can't get away from. They're leaning right into it and their body weight is pushing down into it. So they have this magnetic field that's going right into their bed, right into their body. Now, Brian, did you have a personal experience that drove you into this field? After you got your NTP degree, what was it that was the catalyst to propel you into this field of study? Well, I, I, did, I attended many continuing education lectures after my NTP training. I basically took Dr. Klinghart's ART 1, level 1, 2, and 3 trainings because I really enjoy the clinical assessment uh, techniques. So I became an accomplished muscle tester through that. And I do a lot of clinical assessments and palpations that I, that I learned from the NTP training. So I'm always looking at people's organs and everything, but I really wanted to optimize my client's uh, environment because uh, one of the lectures I attended with Dr. Klinghart, he talked about how important it is in his practice to fix the electromagnetic environment and that half his practice is uh, children with autism. And he said, and he says in many lectures, and you can even look it up on YouTube that, uh, the first step for any child with autism is to fix the electromagnetic environment. Otherwise, they just simply do not get well. And it's the same thing with every single one of his patients. Like the most chronically ill people that have Lyme, MS, ALS, uh, all of these different autoimmune conditions, they, they will not get well, according to Dr. Klinghart, unless they fix their electromagnetic environment and do what I, what I feel is recreating this ancestral environment that's basically purging all of these modern stressors, these technologies of convenience. It's, you know, Weston Price talked about the foods of convenience. Now we have all these technologies of convenience and they're doing the same thing to us. And you can see that. Coming up, Brian gets specific about which technologies of convenience we need to purge from our lives to improve our health. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements offer New Zealand-sourced bone marrow and nose-to-tail organ meats like liver, heart, kidney, pancreas, spleen, and more in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Traditional peoples and early ancestral healers believed that eating the organs from a healthy animal would strengthen and support the health of the corresponding organ of the individual. In other words, a person with a weak heart was fed the heart of a healthy animal. A person with urinary ailments would be given kidney from a healthy animal, and so on. I know I don't get enough organ meats in my diet, so I went ahead and got some supplements for myself. So visit AncestralSupplements.com today to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. And it's not too late to come join us at the conference. You might think, oh, I can't take so many days off. It's, it's too far away. If there's any way possible, you just got to be there. We want to connect with you face to face. Virtual connections are awesome, but there's nothing like seeing people in person. That's kind of the secret sauce of the conference. Even if you want to just come for one day, Sally has a master cooking class. There's also a farm outing to visit Sally's farm in Brandywine, Maryland. So figure out what you can do to join us. Just go to wisetraditions.org to see how you can sign up and be there. Oh, and don't forget to use the coupon code podcast for a discount on registration. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Brian, what are those technologies of convenience that you're referring to? Well, things like, like cell phones. I remember, you know, I was in uh, Green Bank, West Virginia, a few months ago with my wife. And, and this was an area where they have no, it's like a, a quiet zone for, for anything. You can't get, there's no cell phone reception. You go through the radio, and there's no FM stations. There's no AM stations. And the reason is because they have this radio telescope that's very sensitive that they're detecting these weak radio signals that are coming from different stars. And some people say they're, they're listening for aliens and stuff like that too, <laughs> but I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, you know, we were there and we were, we were traveling around and I felt lost without my cell phone. My cell phone was, you know, we, we didn't know where we were going. We had this Airbnb that was scheduled for a certain time and we couldn't get there because 
I didn't have my my reception on my phone. I couldn't connect to the to the network to figure out where the Airbnb was. Mm. So we had to walk in, go to a store, talk to somebody, ask them, "Oh yeah, we know so and so. They're down the street. They have they have a Airbnb that they rent out. You just go down here and around the corner, and and you'll see it. It's this white house and blah blah blah." So we did that, and that was the old fashioned way. It yeah. was wasn't convenient for us to have to go into the store and actually talk to a person. But nowadays we're, we're like, uh, people are lost without their GPS. We're, we're lost. If we can't turn on a light, we have to light a match and, and, uh, and, you know, like, or start a fire or something or an, like, like our ancestors did. Now we just flip a switch and the light comes on and we have this junk light that's, that's doing things to us, to our circadian rhythm. That's, throwing that off and light is also a type of electromagnetic radiation. And so, you know, the idea is, you know, just to take a step back and say, okay, technology can be good, but what's it doing to our bodies and how are we changing our environment to where it's different from what our ancestors were exposed to? And that's the kind of question that kept keeps ringing in my mind as I'm doing these assessments for people and I'm continually finding ways to improve things and put, put in solutions for people. Well, let's talk now about some of those solutions because I really want to offer all of us some hope. I'm sure there are people thinking, oh my gosh, I'm a lost cause. My mattress has metal springs in it. My home is surrounded by Wi-Fi networks and the like. And so I really don't want people to be discouraged. I want them to walk away with some practical tips. So Brian, what would you suggest they could do as first steps to mitigate the effects of all this radiation? It very heavily depends, just like if I'm building a nutritional protocol for somebody and it's very customized to the individual. So when I do a house, when I'm assessing a house, it's very customized to the house and what we find in the house. There might be high magnetic fields because of being connected to the city water and the pipes are energized and that can cause some issues in the house. There might be different wiring errors that we uncover when we're going through the house with the meters and testing everything, or there might be really high dirty electricity, which is a little bit, it's kind of a combination between wireless and electric fields together. And so uh, some of the things that people can do right off the bat, a general recommendation is turning off the Wi-Fi at night, keeping your cell phone on airplane mode, and then also uh, pulling your bed away from the wall a little bit, possibly even turning off the breaker to the to the bedroom at night. These are all general recommendations that won't recreate a perfect ancestral environment because a lot of times you, you need to do more than that. Uh, most of the radiation is coming from outside the home when it comes to wireless and one breaker off is usually not the full solution to get down to zero body voltage like you would have out in nature. But one thing that that can be very helpful is filtering out the dirty electricity in the house. That's one thing where, you know, I've got some solutions on my website for that. And then also, you know, eventually what I, what I have been recommending for every person is to also shield the room with a special shielding paint or sleep canopy that will actually block all the wireless radiation from coming in. And so your, the idea is to create a sleep sanctuary in the bedroom and really focus in on the bedroom as the primary place where you're trying to be free of all the electronic interference with your nervous system. Because that's when your body heals. That's when your brain is detoxing. Your brain actually shrinks by like 40 to 60% at night and makes room for all, all the free radicals to basically be swept out and, uh, and pumped out the back of your neck through your lymphatic system for your liver and your kidneys to process. And so detoxing at night is huge. And we know we live in a huge uh, toxic environment. So fixing the body's primary innate detox and healing mechanism at nighttime. That's been shown by Dr. Klinghart and the naturopathic clinic that I trained with. Like there's many, many years, decades of experience that show that if you just fix your sleeping area, that you can have the resilience during the day to handle a lot of the electromagnetic stressors that we're exposed to in our modern day. Yeah. And I see a parallel of sorts with the food that we eat. In other words, When we're at home, we can make the best choices, use quality ingredients for the most nutrient-dense meal possible. But when we're out and about at a party or what have you, uh, we don't have that same control. Uh, But if we have a solid base, our health has a good 
foundation, if you will. And so at home, if the bedroom can be, as you're describing, a sanctuary of sorts where we can get restorative sleep, it's more likely, again, that our body will be stronger and able to handle and adapt to the stressors that we're always exposed to. Yes, exactly. And I also kind of like to throw in there for people that anytime your body needs to be in that parasympathetic rest and digest mode, it's it's best to be in an area where you don't have the electromagnetic stressors or the envir- other environmental stressors that are that you're surrounded with. So your body can actually be truly relaxed and you can truly digest your food. You can truly detox. Detoxification is a parasympathetic process. And so when I'm doing these consults, a lot of times people will also have a sauna that they um, want me to test. And saunas are notorious for being high in EMF. Mm -hmm. And there's only a few on the market that I that I would recommend, actually only one right now. And they're, you know, detoxification, because it is that parasympathetic process, you really want it to be a place where you're not adding that extra EMF stress. You want to to truly get in this deep detoxification mode. You can't have that extra added stress on your body. Absolutely. But now, Brian, what would you say to those who are skeptical, who'd be like, oh my gosh, he's the ghostbuster of EMFs or something. You know, he's just bringing up all this stuff, but we lived in our home. We've lived in our home for generations and we're totally fine. Uh, What would you say to somebody who doesn't buy all this? Well, you know, many people have eaten a lot of junk food for many years and nothing's ever happened. Uh, I can't, you can't say that, you know, things are very um, subjective uh, with, with people and symptoms, uh, symptom based. And uh, one of the things Dr. Klinghart talks about is that you take lab work from the, from one person who's feeling it and another person who's not, and it's, they have the exact same inflammatory markers. Uh, But for me, my answer is that, you know what, I've never done an assessment and left the skeptic behind. When, I, when, I, when you put the meters in the, in the person's hands, there's no denying it. When you show them the different studies and the, and the things that are out there, there's, you know, they say, oh, there's, no most, there's not enough studies, this hasn't been studied enough, or it's been proven to be safe. Well, lots of things by the government have been proven to be safe, and we know that they're not safe. You know, we, there's plenty of studies, there's thousands and thousands of studies that show that there is a correlation with illness. And if you're willing to do something, you know, a lot of the studies are related to having, being, having a diagnosis of cancer or a certain type of condition. But we know that uh, diagnostic medicine is not the end all be all of optimal health. When you can feel really crappy before you have a diagnosis. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so uh, if you wanna optimize your health, I'm your guy. If you're the if you're the one that wants to recreate an ancestral healing environment, that's what I try to create in people's homes and I'm starting to train other people to do the same. Wow, that is really powerful and I really like your mission, Brian. I appreciate that you have scientific studies to go with what you're talking about. We'll definitely put links in the show notes for folks to access those. And I want to wrap up by asking you the question, if the listener could do one thing to improve their health, Brian, what would you recommend that they do? That's a hard question for me because there's, there's so much, but I would, I would at least start with the, with the sleeping environment. Change out your mattress to being on a metal-free mattress and unplug everything in your bedroom. That would be a really good first step that everybody can do tonight after listening to this podcast. Well, that is great advice and we will hustle to do that. So thank you for the information and for your time today, Brian. Yeah, you're welcome. My guest today was Brian Hoyer. For more on Brian and his work, visit his website, shieldedhealing.com. And we will post the links to studies he mentioned on today's show, along with other resources, on the podcast page of the WestonAPrice.org website. Just look for the show notes for this episode. On that same page, you'll see our listener survey. Please take just a moment to fill it out. It won't take long, and it would mean so much. Thanks in advance. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a thing. Next week, my guest is Monica Ford. Monica is a master fermenter who founded the first traditional foods delivery service, Real Food Devotee. She puts the fun in fermenting, honestly, and she makes the most delicious products I've ever had, from wild fermented sriracha sauce to sauerkraut and more. 
You'll get a taste of her awesomeness next week when we share the interview that we recorded in front of a live audience in Baltimore. In that conversation, Monica takes us on a fascinating journey through time as she explains how food fermentation started, what it means for our health, and why we got away from it in the first place. Finally, a quick thank you to our podcast production team. Assistants include Cassie Reef, Diva Rizvi, Melanie Ahern, and Ari O'Hara. Cheryl Heftelin helps with social media. Mary Hine, Olga de Villiers, and Joy de los Santos boost sponsorship and help with special projects. Our listening team includes Heather Carpentier and Victor Cosetto. And Amy Matias helps with transcriptions. Our music is the track Sunny Side Up from Michelle Bloom's CD, Big Backyard. Find her music at allthingsbloom.com. So that's it. Let's keep in touch, everybody. I'm on Instagram at Holistic Hilda. Follow me for health tips, podcast stuff, behind the scenes on the show, and me. Oh, and by the way, my podcasting book just became available on Amazon. It's called Podcasting Made Simple. It's a quick guide to one of the best media platforms around. Check it out and enjoy. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening today. We have all kinds of resources to support you on your health journey. On the Weston A. Price Foundation website, you'll find podcasts, blogs, articles, and brochures related to just about any health topic you can imagine. You can also find a local chapter to help you discover sources of real, organic food in your area. And you can become a member to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism. Visit WestonAPrice.org for all this and more. And remember that the Wise Traditions podcast is available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.